Well, finally, 15 months after taking the Mongolia job, we've got our first competitive game, and it's the prestigious East Asian Football Federation Championship qualifying rounds. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, Dodgy Gamer here, International Manager of Mystery, managing Obscure Nation so you don't have to. We are on Obscure Nation number two, Mongolia, and as I said in the intro, it's our first competitive game today. We're playing Macau in the East Asian Cup qualifying round, so this is qualifying for the 2021 East Asian Cup, just to show you how this works. I'm showing you here the qualifying from two years ago. You can see at that time Mongolia, who I was not in charge of at the time, came second to Guam in the group. So this is just a four-team round robin. Play each other once. The top team then progresses on to another qualifying round, and this time they join uh, Chinese Taipei, Hong Kong, North Korea, and then the top team from that actually gets to qualify for the Asian Cup, uh, the East Asian Cup itself, where they join China, South Korea, Japan. I very much doubt we're going to get that far. We'll see how this qualifying tournament goes. So this is basically um, three matches, as I said, playing each team once. We've got Macau, Northern Mariana, and Guam. All the matches are being played in Guam as a mini tournament. It's three matches in five days, so it's going to be pretty intense. But first, I'm going to bring you up to speed on the friendlies we've been playing since I took over. So you were there in the last episode. We took on and beat Pakistan. If you haven't seen that episode yet, well, the results had a spoiler, but um, the link's there anyway, so you can go and check it out. And then we followed that up with a 2-1 win over Brunei, which was a good result. And then we closed out the year with a series of draws. I took on my old team, East Timor. We... Looked good to win that game. We were the better side, but a late goal from uh, some guy who I never picked, Enrique Cruz, meant a 1-1 draw. Similar story against uh, Tonga, if I just bring that up here. Well, I say similar story in that they scored with a few minutes left, but we had to equalise bang on 90 minutes. We were the better team. We dominated. We just got hit on the counter um, but luckily we were able to scrape out a draw, so show some good resiliency at least. Then we played Bhutan. Um, this g game I wanted to organise as Bhutan had beaten Mongolia so convincingly just before I took over. So just as a measuring stick, it was a nil-nil. Nothing much to uh, write home about in that game, but at least we were not beaten. Coming in to 2020, our first match... Today's opponents, Macau, we played them back in March. We got a quite com quite a comfortable 3-1 win that day. However, since then, our form's not been so great. Chinese Taipei we played. We were lucky to get a 1-1 draw there. They dominated the match. We just hit them, um, hit them with a goal late in the first half, uh, but they came back into it. Um, we should have... They probably deserve to win, to be honest. We should have lost that one. And then Guam. Now, I arranged this friendly before the East Asian uh, qualifying rounds came up. Um, and we were beaten quite convincingly. So as only one team goes through, that's a bit of a worry. So today's first opponents, Macau, you see they're ranked 197th in the world. We are currently ranked 186th. Sorry, 185th, actually, 185th joint. So we should be winning this game. If we just have a more detailed look at the rankings, just scrolling all the way down towards the bottom. There you see we're equal with Sao Tome and Prince Eep, um, above Samoa and Liechtenstein, just behind Bangladesh. If we have a look at our fellow opponents here, Guam, I'm just trying to find them. They're ranked, um, they're the highest ranked team in, in this particular qualifying pool, 174th in the world. Uh, Northern Mariana Islands, you'll find down here because they're not an official member of FIFA. I would be expecting to beat them. I'm hoping we can get a win against Macau here to put us in the strongest possible position for when we play Guam. So this is how I've lined up. I've reverted back to my favourite football manager formation. Um, I don't know what we'd call this. Uh, the, the game calls it a 4-1-2-3 DM. I sometimes call it a 4-3-3. Anyway... 
We're going with the back four, wing backs to push forward. We've got an anchor man, Carrilero, and a central midfielder in here, just going with the strongest roles for those players. Uh, wingers, I've managed to find a right winger finally. My scouts came through and picked this guy out. He's not fantastic. He's only one and a half current and potential ability, which for this team is uh, pretty rubbish, but at least he can play the position. And then we've got our striker up front, so we're going to submit the team. It's a worry when they say you've got players who might struggle to see out the match when you're thinking, well, we've got another match in two days and uh, one more match immediately after that. Anyway, into the dressing room we go. Team talk time. So we're going to tell this team we're favourites for a reason. No big reaction. And then we'll follow that up with the old I've got faith, quick tunnel interview, something about the captain. I can rely on him to set the tone. Standard answer. So, Macau playing in the green. Mongolia in the red with the white shorts as we kick off this match played in the afternoon. Sunshine in Guam. Early chance for Macau. Whew. <laughs> that would have been a terrible start for us. Luckily, it went just wide. And here we go. Next highlight coming. Macau with the throw in. We are unable to dispossess them and they're building the attack here. This is not the same... Team we were playing against in that friendly earlier this year, it would seem. All the highlights have been Macau's so far, although we do seem to have had some chances according to the match stats. It's just the match engine hasn't deemed them worthy of even showing us. As we reach the half-hour mark, still no action. And all the way to half-time and still no action. Although we've dominated possession, we've been the better team, we just haven't seen any attacking highlights yet. Um, we've been the better team, that's what we will tell the team. The better team. Get out there, make a difference. I'm motivating the right back very well, but it's just a shame he, he's not someone who's likely to change the game. Anyway, we kick off this time. Bayan Dorj is bringing it through to Bayar Jagal. Bayar Jagal gets dispossessed way too easily. Okay, here we go. Free kick for Mongolia. Hits the wall, goes out for a throw in. The attack's going to continue here. Let's see. No, it's not. Well, that was. <laughs> Okay, that was our first attacking highlight. We just hammered a free kick into the wall. It went out for a throw-in. That was it. But okay, are we going to build something from here? Tessarin Bayar, I think that's what his name is, plays it inside to Bayar Jagal. who's going on a bit of a run. Knocks it out wide to the winger. And the header comes in. And the rebound. It was spilled by the keeper. And Gantogtok. Gantogtok. That's what we'll call him. Gantuyaya Gantogtok. Gets the goal. Great run by Bayar Jogol. This guy, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name, whips in the cross. Keeper just can't hold it. And while he's trying to scoop it off the floor, we take the lead. Yes. Macau now coming forward looking for a quick equaliser. Hopefully we're going to dispossess them and hit them on the counter here. They go for the long ball though and they've got behind the defence, whipping the shot first time and Torbold is equal to it. But Macau are starting to play a bit. They've they've been woken up by that goal. They're, they're, oh, they're quick round the back. Keeper blocks it, defender blocks it and then we dispossess them with the tackle. But no, the referee stopped play there. No, he hasn't. The, the Macau players just pulled back as soon as they lost the ball. Good, keep doing that please. Okay, Macau now looking for another quick break, and they're getting it. I'm going to have to make some changes here, I think, because Macau are swarming forward on us at the moment. The keeper saves it. We've got a corner. It's going to be an in-swinger, and we clear it. Hoof it away into the empty stand. Time to make those tactical changes. Right, so we kept the same shape, just made it a bit more defensive. We've got that defensive mentality now. I'm telling them to try and keep the ball, waste time wherever possible. We'll see where that gets us, if anything. When I beat them away, uh, we did go that time with a cautious approach, and we've given away a penalty. Ask who, ask who, ask you, ask me, ask who has given away the penalty, and Macau have equalised. So all that tweaking with the tactics for naught. Time for some fresh legs. So we're going to bring on Togoldor. He's been our main striker just because of his uh, his overall condition, I didn't pick him as a starter today. And who else are we going to bring on? I'm going to bring on this guy, uh, Altanguya. Uh, he's another one. My 
my coaching team picked up um, when they were scouting the national pool. So he can play and as an attacking midfielder on the left. Unfortunately, he's retiring in about nine months' time, but we might as well use him while we've got him. have to remind myself after all those months of friendlies that I'm only allowed three substitutes here and not six. Anyway, we're coming into the final couple of minutes. I don't go to attacking because that was when Macau started to open us up. It looks like we're heading for a draw here, which is going to be disappointing because that really puts the pressure on that we've got to beat Northern Mariana in the next game and then we've possibly faced a situation where we have to beat Guam. I was hoping that a win against Macau and a win also um, against Northern Mariana Islands would leave us in a position where perhaps a draw would be good enough on goal difference to get us through. But I uh, will say we were unlucky today. And we see that Guam ran out. Big winners, 4-0 against Northern Mariana. So they are the team to beat in this competition. And there we see Northern Mariana. My coach is telling me I can't tell you anything about them. There's hardly any data available. I'm, I'm guessing that's going to be a completely greyed out squad when we have a look at it. Time, although it's only a day more in game time, we're still going to do what we always do. Fade to black. Be right back. And welcome back. Here we go. It's time for match day two. As we take on Northern Mariana, let's see if we can get points on the board, if we can get a win on the board, if we fail to win today. That's probably it, and we've got to hope that somehow Macau can take points off Guam. Lining up slightly differently today, we're going for the 4-4-1-1, partly because we have had some success with this tactic. We, had, we came unstuck against Guam with this tactic, but we have had success elsewhere, at least picking up three wins with it. The other consideration I have here is rotation. So getting in some of those players who don't fit in the other formation, giving giving some of my first team as a chance to rest, and I'm hoping Northern Mariana are not going to be too much of a challenge here. Anyway, into the dressing room we go. Uh, team talk is assertive that we uh, expect nothing but a win, basically. Going to put the pressure on the players here. Get out there and make a difference. It's kickoff time. What can we do here? Okay. Northern Mariana playing in the white. We're playing in the red. Let's get the win, boys. Okay, we're straight into a highlight here. It's Northern Mariana with the ball. And we're just letting them run with it. That's uh, something I'm not too happy to see. But assured defending. We play it back to the keeper. And we're starting to build something here. Togoldor knocks one forward down the center. It comes to Asku. Asku gave away that penalty against Macau, but I'm still letting him play today. Oh, and a good save from the keeper. Just pushes it round the post, but we've got a corner. Some good early pressure. Let's turn it into an early goal, shall we? No, doesn't look like it. Not from this highlight anyway, but off to a positive start. Okay, here we go. We've got a free kick. It's played into the middle. Bit of gliding across the pitch there. Oh, hacked down by the Northern Mariana player there. And they launch a counter. But they give the ball away. Chin Sands got it. Monk Erdene plays it forward to Gal Erdene. Gal Erdene on a run. Knocks it out to the winger. Gets it out to Akju, who makes up for giving away that penalty against Macau. With a goal, does the old... Bow and arrow celebration. That was a nicely constructed goal. We we took advantage of the mistake. We capitalised on that mistake. And then classic goal there. Goalkeeper left too much space at his near post. But we will take it. And here we go. Are we going to add a second one here? Chinsan's got the ball. He knocks it inside to Gal Edene. Monk Edene. Back to Gal Edene. Back to Monk Edene. Back to Gal Edene. He takes the shot. We get a corner. Nice Bit of interplay between the two air denes there. Akchu, Ak Asku, whoever your name is, nothing comes from the corner, but we're still in control. Oh, but here come Northern Mariana. Hopefully they're not going to wrest that control away from us. It looks like they're going to get off their first real attack. Fantastic block by the defender there. Real guts and determination to slide down and knock that one out. Here we go, out swinging corner this time. Could the break be on here? Galadeni's got it. He's got acres of space. He knocks it inside to Gantog Tok, who gets dispossessed, though. And that's the end of that particular passage of play. Okay, one more highlight, perhaps. 
before the half-time break comes. Can we go in with a nice, comfortable 2-0 lead? Galladerni gets the ball. He knocks it out wide to the winger. And yes, we've got the goal. Gantog Tok. Gantog Tok gets the second goal of the game. That's what we've deserved based on our play, I think. Look at that. We just exploit that right flank beautifully. I'm going to have to learn how to pronounce that winger's name because he's been involved in a couple of our plays now. It's Balginyam. Okay, Balginyam. That's easy enough. Half time it is then. 2 0. We've got to tell the boys there that we uh, might be winning, but that could all change. Don't get complacent. That's the message. Anyway, we kick off the second half. Let's see if we can extend this 2 0 lead. Into the last 10 minutes now, we've got a corner. It's been a quiet second half, but we're perfectly happy with that. Although it would be good to open up that goal difference just in case that comes into play later on. We do have tired players, but Moron, who I've brought on for one final push, he wins the ball, plays it inside. Galladene gets the goal. It's 3 0. It's 3 0. Galladene's deserved that goal today, playing from that attacking midfield shadow striker position. Nice work here. Moron did so well. Didn't live up to his name at all to set that up. Galladene places it, strokes it into the back of the net. But we've got a highlight here straight from the kickoff. Are Northern Mariana going to do a too little, too late comeback? Or are we going to punish them further here, we see, as Duff McKagan gets the ball and they bring it forward. They're just playing short passes. They're just trying to keep a hold of the ball, working their way forward to Joe Wangmiller. What a name that is. Bogdan. Bogdan. Let's hope he gets bogged down in midfield. But they've got it out to Schroeder on the right. I'm sure these are made-up names. Anyway, here we go. They've knocked it in. And straight to Torbold. Safe hands. Come on. Let's run down the clock. A one final time wasting substitution. And hopefully one final set of highlights. Northern Mariana desperate for a goal. But that's just gone straight to the keeper. Let's see what we can do from here. Take your time, mate. Take your time. No rush. Asku knocks it forward to Moron. It's back to Asku. Get it into the center. Galadene. Oh, look at that. It hit the post and then it just bounced like six inches in front of it. Ooh, on another day, that would have been a fourth goal. Anyway, we're up to the 90 minutes now. Two minutes of stoppage time to be played. An assured victory. Possibly the easiest victory we've had so far on the International Manager of Mystery. You're not going to see many of these. So lap it up while you can. Anyway, um, there's a finally a decent chance for Northern Mariana, but it's been saved. I think this corner is going to be the final action. As soon as we can clear this, yep, the goalkeeper's got it. He's going to launch it. The referee's going to blow the whistle. And we're going to have four points on the board going into that crunch game with Guam. There we go. Referee's done his job nicely. No surprises as Mongolia won the match. Yes, no surprises at all. Maybe just a surprise for me that we won the match. Anyway, very happy with that. Continue, and away we go. Let's see what happened in the Guam game. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Guam were able to get the win over Macau. 2-0, an early goal, and a stoppage time goal. So if we have a look at the table as things stand, we see here we are second. We're two points behind, so that makes that match with Guam a must-win game, and this is the Gram who just two weeks ago beat us quite handily, 3-0. So it's going to be a big ask, but that's going to be the next episode. So thank you, everybody, very much for watching. Please like the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm Dodgy Gamer, International Manager of Mystery, and I'll see you again soon.